In a previous video, I presented the second iteration of my DIY one wheel. After finishing off the build and performing some testing, I then talked about why I thought it ended up being a failure. Now, with more third party parts coming to market, today I'll present my new DIY one wheel, the Fun Wheel ST, and we go riding. So after my previous failures, I needed some guaranteed success. To this end, I bought parts from my new build from a supplier offering tried and tested third-party options. This is the resulting product of these purchases. The supplier of these parts, Fungineers, is relatively new to the market, but their parts have already seen mass adoption in the DIY space and received much positive feedback. If you're looking to build your own DIY one wheel, Fungineers supplies the Superflux motor, the Stompy's foot pad sensor, the Thunder rails, and the PCB battery. The Superflux motor, Stompy sensors, and Thunder rails are all used in this build. The Thunder rails are a super versatile rail system with adjustable ride height, distinctive nose and tail cam, and compatibility with future motion parts such as controller and battery boxes, bumpers, and foot pads. However, thanks to the 3D printable designs for controller and battery boxes, bumpers, and foot pads included with the purchase of Thunder rails, one only needs to bring your own VESC, tire, and cabling, and you can be up and riding with a scratch build really quickly. I chose to 3D print the controller and battery boxes and front foot pad to fit the Stompy sensor and bought FM bumpers and a Craft and Ride one tail rear foot pad for simplicity. So the first thing to do is clean up the 3D prints off the 3D printer and fit the nuts and threaded inserts used to secure the lids and rails to the boxes. Fungineers include battery box designs that accommodate an 18650 base battery pack in a low profile rear box or 21700 base battery pack in a larger box that requires a bit more DIY effort to install. And if you're concerned about using FDM printed parts, an alternative is to have a manufacturer like PCBWay or JLC PCB 3D print these parts in robust ABS, resin or nylon materials. After minimal tidy up, the 3D printed foot pad also needs threaded inserts fitted so it can be secured to the board. Some elbow grease is applied to the area where the Stompies interface to smooth the stepped finish of the 3D printed parts as best possible. The Stompies comprise the two zone flex PCB sensor and Velostat pressure sensitive material. The circuits of the flex PCB are wired to the VESC's ADC ports via a waterproof connector in my case. DXF template is included with the design files for custom cutting grip tape for the front sensor like I'm showing here, but I'll use spare grip tape supplied with my Craft and Ride foot pad. I then temporarily assemble the foot pad to check sensor function. Success! Then I encase the wires in TESA wrap and hot glue. The electrical architecture of a DIY one wheel varies case by case. As is common with FM one wheels, the on off switch and charge port are located in the front box with the controller. As such, to use protected cabling, you must connect the charge port to the battery in the rear box and the battery to the VESC. In my case, I added front and rear WS2815 LED strips, controllable wirelessly via WLED through the inclusion of a separate ESP32 dev board, which means even more wiring. I chose a U-Box VESC as the brains for my one wheel, which offers Bluetooth and serial support, 12 volt power for lights, and many more things I don't plan to use, such as CAN. This is my architecture, which can be applied to other U-Box builds generally. After receiving my Superflux, I can now attempt to tame this beast by pumping it full of electrical pixies. First go on the 3D printed TPU lifesavers and tyre though. Getting this tough Trail Focus Max tyre on was quite the task, but I was not going to let it defeat me.
Off camera, I added tyre slime after installation of the tyre to prevent punctures bringing riding to an abrupt end. Final assembly is next. I fix the stompies in place and apply the craft and ride grip tape supplied with my rear foot pad. I also paint the craft and ride pads exposed wood black to tie into the green accented black thing going on. The bracket holding the U-Box vest is then glued into the controller box and a thermal pad cut to size. This thermal pad is critical as it allows heat from the vest to sink to the lid of the controller box. Some final wiring is completed and the motor cables are routed, connected and the box is closed up. The only steps left are to fit the bumpers and foot pads and configure the VESC firmware. Configuration of a VESC is something that takes some learning. It's by no means difficult, but requires the user to enter settings based on their specific setup, and thus is not something I'll cover in this video. Fortunately, a number of other YouTubers have put together excellent guides which I've linked in the video description. But what are we doing? Let's go out and ride! So there you have it. Finally, a successful conclusion to my one wheel building journey. Um, took a while, um, but I did what I set out to do, and safe to say, I love this thing, um, and I'm enjoying every minute, even the stacks. <laughs> I've been clocking up the kilometers and any opportunity I get I want to be out there on the board it's um, it's really addictive and it's um, far more enjoyable and rewarding than I expected it to be is this something anyone can do I think yes um, yes and it's getting even easier um, the DIY elements of this build were mainly the the harness um, and also putting in the lights in the unit but Fungineers is just released a new configurator uh, where you can spec your build from A to Z you don't have to build wiring harnesses anymore if you don't want to you can just buy it you don't have to 3D print parts if you don't have a 3D, print, 3D printer anymore it's, it really simplifies the build uh, and makes it a lot more accessible for everyone so what about cost then? did I spend more than I would have liked? Uh, yeah, yeah I did um, do I regret spending that much? No, not at all. If you want to have an idea of the total cost of my build, then I will put it here. I did actually achieve my aim somewhat in that I wanted to build something cheaper than a one wheel. Um, and this is much more cost effective than a future motion one wheel. Um, for reference, a GT in Australia is about $3,800 last time I looked, so there's a substantial price discrepancy for, on paper, um, similar performance, if not better performance, out of the one wheel, out of the, the Fun Wheel ST. What about the compromises, though? You're saying, right? Like, I mean, it's all gonna it's gonna fall apart on me, right? Well, it's definitely it's definitely some different manufacturing technologies that you know, wouldn't make it in a production sense, like 3D printing with FDM. The battery box is unprotected. 
yeah, we'll see how that goes. I mean, it's just been another one. VESC functionality, particularly, has developed a lot recently, and it's continually being developed. Um, it's some it's somewhat of an open architecture, and it gives you almost infinite customization of your ride. Um, the community is growing. It's continually being improved. Um, so if you like to be able to tweak all your parameters of your build, how it feels, how it rides, how it responds, then I think it's uh, it's it's unrivaled by Future Motion. Um, and it's got some additional functionality in there that Future Motion doesn't have that makes riding, I would argue, even even better. So yeah, and I think um, performance is splendid. It's been great. So on that bombshell, catch you later. For example, the one wheel GT here in Australia runs about $3,800. So you could build two of these for one GT. And it's, I haven't ridden the GT, but I'd say it's, 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 it's better. I mean, I haven't, can't qualify that, but... <laughs> what about the compromises, though, you're saying, right? Like, I mean, it's all gonna... It's gonna fall apart on me, right? Well, maybe. Maybe it will. Yeah, see over time, but... Um, I've crashed it a few times, and surprisingly, it's been fine. So... Touch wood. Under there. Hmm. If you went with like a float plate or a badger bumper, I think they are, then I think they're HDPE, so they'd be a little bit more um, robust, a bit more slippy. Coefficient of friction. Science. It's good. Buy one.